All right, now a few weeks into the COVID-19 uh, crisis sweeping across the continent, uh, we spoke with some gym owners uh, previously, and this week we're talking to another sector of the industry, the hold makers. Uh, joining me today from Escape Climbing is Ryan Angelo, and from Kilter Grips is Jackie Hefley. Thank you both for uh, for taking some time this morning. To get started right off the bat, uh, hold manufacturers are... are they all have very different uh, ways of how their companies run. And I know both of you have some differences as well. So Ryan, could you start off by kind of describing how your business operates as a hold manufacturer? Yeah, absolutely. And so as you look at Escape, that's kind of the, the parent company. And so Escape Climbing, we have our hold line, we do training tools, we have um, some volumes and then the hardware. Um, and that's kind of our, our base. And we manufacture everything in-house on the holds, make the volumes, import, warehouse, the T-nuts. Um, and so that's all done here in Minneapolis. What the, then we have five brands. And so that's Escape. Uh, Friction is, uh, we partnered with Luigi in Canada. And so we manufacture that in-house as well. And then we service, um, do all the sales, do everything um, for Friction. Um, Luigi still owns a brand, kind of operates it, so it's still very much a Canadian brand um, with us kind of partnering with him. And then we have, so that's uh, Fusion would also fall into that. That's our newer brand, and so that's like an all dual texture brand, and we do that in-house as well in Minneapolis. So as you think about our manufacturing, we have those three brands that come out of what we'd say like escape manufacturing. Uh, we also have Kingdom and Working Class, and then so that's those are two brands that are outsourced, and so th those are produced in Bulgaria at Comp X, and then also at Aragon, you know, in Colorado. And so that's kind of just the general lay of the land of, as far as the, the five different brands. And Jackie, what about you guys? Is this me now, Tyler? Everything froze on my end. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Tell, us, tell us a bit about how Kilter works. Um, so Kilter is. Um, well, what is Kilter? It's uh, it's my, me and Ian's climbing hold brand. Um, and then we also have Urban Plastics. So Peter Jewell lives in Colorado. He's worked with us for a couple of years now. Um, he continues to make Urban Plastics. And um, and uh, we have all our production done at Aragon and at Composite X. So we produce different shapes for both lines, um, for both labels, for both lines at both places. So like you can get sandstone from Aragon and sandstone from Compex, they go together. So it's kind of like a big, we just kind of expanded our production instead of duplicating our production. Um, and we also do like, we work with pro athletes and setters. We have some other lines under Haptic that go with that. Um, and so we don't produce our own holds. We do do some R and D stuff. We do some um, in-house stuff, but we don't sell it. It's just sort of for us to test things. Um, we're always kind of trying new ideas and uh yeah so we so we don't like ryan has the capacity to quickly do large scale manufacture we don't really have that we do have the knowledge and experience to manufacture climbing holds we've done you know our own molding we've done our own pouring for r d stuff ian's been doing it for 30 plus years so we could do it if we had to and we've definitely talked about as a contingency plan producing some products or home wall companies um, if we had to operate on a really limited scale. We're doing our best right now to talk, not have to do that, though, and try to just make sure we can take care of our employees and do as much as we can to help gyms recover so then they can start to buy holds again. Because as Ryan probably knows, too, right now it's home walls. Even when gyms start making money again, they're not going to be able to buy holds right away. So it's going to be long, long haul for climbing hold companies. And we have employees. Ryan has employees, and we need to make sure we can take care of them. To, to finish sizing you guys up, could you tell us uh, how many employees uh, your companies uh, currently have in-house? Uh, we have like 10-ish. Cool. Yeah, we have like 6 yeah. to 10, depending. Yeah, we're, we're probably a similar size. We have uh, 10 full-time employees. And then depending on production demand, we'll, we'll bring on part-time and so we'll fluctuate. Um, 10 is kind of bare bones for us. And then we'll fluctuate anywhere from 10 to 15, kind of in that range. All right. And then the last question to flesh out uh, where everybody's at is, uh, what's your current operating status? Uh, are you guys still in production? Are you still open uh, for orders? Where are you uh, operating right now? Ryan, you can start. 
Yeah, so right now we're still doing a very limited shipping um, this week and next week out of Minneapolis. Um, we're kind of on like a stay-at-home leave is what it's called, or like a stay-at-home order from our governor. And so one of our brands is exempt from that, and so that's still shipping, just kind of limited hardware, stock stuff. Um, we're not manufacturing right now for the next two weeks. Um, so with that said, we still, Anthony and Rita are still doing all the emails and working on that. Um, our two engineers are still um, developing and working on side projects. Um, next week, everyone's going to be um, calling in and going through different training and going through some safety stuff. And and so we're, we're kind of using this time. We'll be all teleworking um, or um, up to two people at the shop at a time right now. And so it's, it's definitely a different season right now at escape. What about uh, over a kilter? Um, so we have a bit of stock at Aragon um, that we're selling. Uh, we have, like Ryan said, we have a, we have a shop and we have a limited number of people that can be in the shop at any time. So we have, we started out by kind of making guidelines for our employees to follow before there was any kind of stay at home order here. Um, Part of our spot in Longmont, we're not under stay at home, but Boulder is. So it's kind of split for us. So anyway, we're, we're still shipping orders. We have stock inventory we're selling. We're still taking production orders because Aragon is still um, there. They actually have two classifications as an essential business in Colorado so far. So they're still operating as of right now. Um, again, if that fails, we have stock to sell as well. And then um, we're trying to keep, like Ryan said, doing alternate things with our employees. We're trying to keep everybody paid as, for as long as we can right now, just because they have expenses as well. And like one of our guys, his landlord declined to do anything to help him with his rent. For example. So we're trying to make sure he's taken care of. And I've also been doing a lot of research with the SBA and stuff to figure out what options we have to help him because, you know, we don't, or we're not just him, all of our employees. We don't want uh, everybody to be hosed if we can help it. Um, Okay. I feel like I keep taking a you know, left turn with the question. We're, so, yeah, we, we're at right now. Okay. My understanding was that Aragon has, has slowed their production down, although they are still producing. Is that correct uh, from what you've heard? Yeah. they. I mean, they, you know, they went from having, like, a bunch of new gyms that were supposed to be opening and the trade show orders they were supposed to be shipping to having home wall orders. Mm-hmm. So I think they have reduced, and also they have some employees that that maybe aren't coming in, or they've had to reduce the number of people to have, to be um, safe. So I think that they have just slowed their production out of practicality for the time being. All right, Ryan has uh, Composite X reached out to you guys in terms of how their production is going. Are they also taking a hit, or are they currently just still producing like normal? Yeah, as far as we know, Jackie could is manufactured there. Um, I talked to Dan a couple weeks ago and at that point they're still fully operational. Um, they have the ability to scale down as needed, you know, with demand. And so their business can scale and fluctuate and yeah, right now they're still taking orders and we're shipping and, you know, probably similar to, to Aragon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so at this point, um, you know, up here at least in ontario we've been now told to expect about three months uh, of of staying at home that's what our public health officials are saying probably expect around the end of june Uh revisiting things um i imagine because it does seem like the situation is a little less under control down in the states that it that might be a reasonable (laughs) expectation as well um for you guys as you're in these early stages of contingency uh jackie we're talking about sba stuff and trying to figure out your you know whole financial uh picture um is that kind of the stage where you're at or are you starting to look at long-term changes to to how the business operates because just to go back to something else jackie you said was that you know let's say everybody reopens three months from now uh the orders aren't going to be coming from gyms right away we're all going to be having a really hard time when we reopen uh so how do you kind of foresee your your future over the next three months assuming that uh your production will still be fairly low going into the summer uh ryan you can start i guess or just sorry jackie you opened your mouth so you uh, you go ahead you you can go first well you said you said my name at the beginning of that statement so totally I yeah you were asking yeah me you're right, you're right. Up question and there's like a little bit of a lag so that's okay. um, i can't always tell what's happening um yeah so uh we we actually have a really excellent uh accounting partner 
Griffin. I know you guys have probably met Griffin at the trade show or whatever. Griffin's amazing. He really has been planning. We've been kind of keeping our eye on this thing for a while and just also trying to plan ahead a little bit. So we're going to be okay for a couple months if things kind of stay low and slow. We're just trying really hard to make sure that we have, we can extend that um, for as long as possible. So the biggest things are a when that recovery happens b getting the home orders right now to kind of help keep us floating so we can push out how long we can kind of carry on and stay alive so when people at can recover we're there to provide holds because worst case scenario is all the hold companies or most of them can't make it through this and then gyms are open again and there's no hold companies um and then hold companies if they want to restart they have to start over they have to sell everything to somebody else who comes in maybe without the same knowledge and experience whatever it is so we're trying to prevent that from happening um, so we're just trying to see what all of our options are so we can plan as well as we can to extend the period of time that we can float for, for as long as we have to, to get through this. Um, right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So just thinking about the, the time, um, and like what that looks like going forward, uh, our governor is kind of thinking two weeks in Minnesota here. And so that could easily turn into three or more, um, like your situation as Tyler. And as I run the business, like climbing is expanding and we've expanded and I've wanted to grow more aggressively than we have, but it's kind of that balance between investing in equipment or different things, but yet making sure you have, um, enough cash on hand to weather a recession or something like this. Um, and so that said, you know, if you think about personal finances, you want about like a six month, you know, supply on the, on the personal side. I think there's very few businesses, you know, especially in our industry that have it and escape yeah, doesn't. Uh, um, we don't but we're more anything. like, we're maybe at about like three months. Um, our receivables, you know, could extend that out, but the receivables like, the gyms don't have the cash to, to pay us on a lot of those receivables right now. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's trying to figure out how to work with them. And like, yes, we want to collect the money, you know, which could ex extend out like our R and D and paying people, even if we don't have, you know, holds to manufacture, um, but also being generous with gyms and, you know, understanding their situation. Um, so as far as we're looking at, I want to keep the crew on um, as long as we can. And so for us, that's, you know, even if things completely dried up, you know, that'd be several months, which I think buys us, you know, enough time and things haven't dried up because the home wall market, like Jackie said, are buying right now. It's a much different sale. You, it, you have to run it in a little different way and be adaptable um, versus, you know, a $200 order versus, you know, lots of those versus a couple bigger, several thousand dollar orders. So it business looks very different right now, but uh, yeah, that said, as we think about spring, summer, um, I'm optimistic um, with what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, speaking about the home wall stuff, I've reached out to a few uh, other companies just trying to find other guests for this uh, for this episode. And most people said no, uh, which is, is fairly normal for, for these kind of talk shows, especially when it's talking business. But on background, uh, some of them are saying, yeah, things have really slowed. This is going to be hard. Whereas some other places have been saying our business is booming, if not outright breaking sales records. Um, and those, as you would understand, are the whole manufacturers that uh, are, are make products that suit the home wall uh, builder, if not outright target them. Um, Jackie, I think of Kilter in my head as almost like the, I don't want to say luxury brand, but, but a, a very high tier brand, right? You've never been afraid of pricing your products in a way that respect uh, paying shapers properly uh, and paying for high quality holds. Um, and Escape, I also think of them as a gym brand. You talk about uh, trying to make sure that you're catering to that audience. How, how would that change your, the way you operate? Because for Kilter, you know, we think of these big holds with frankly, a lot of plastic on them, right? Uh, things that aren't the same as that set of 20 perfect, you know, hand sized jugs and feet that you want for your plywood wall. So is, is, is that something you have to kind of address this really big change in just the philosophy of, of how you uh, create holds? I mean, for us, we've been trying to, you know, hit all the markets. So like the big thing that we're kind of making videos about right now are the complex holds, which are holds Ian's made. They have like different angles and they fit together. So you can, 
buy a set, and the set, when you first look at it, you're like, oh, that looks, looks expensive compared to, like, 10 jugs for your wall. But the holds can be used so many different ways that it actually exponentially multiplies the value of each one of the holds in the set. So we've been doing a lot with them at home here because we're just trying to kind of get, like, a real empathetic view of what a home wall owner is going through. So we have, like, a vert wall and a 20-degree wall in the barn, and we've been setting boulders every night just trying to see, like, okay, like, how different – is it really? And it's um, it's amazing how different like adding blocking jibs makes the holds. So you really are getting a lot more, um, you know, for essentially for buying one set of holds. That said, we also have a section of our wall called home wall recommendations, sorry, of our website. And that's a, set, a section I made just to kind of put sets that I think are really good for home walls. Either they're good value for the um, number of holds you get they're good for home walls size wise they're good like basic holds you need on a home wall stuff like that and i put a couple big kaiju on there because sometimes people like to buy a big hold for their home wall um but then if you're doing that you want to make sure it's a versatile big hold so you can use it on a variety of grades or angles or types of climb you don't want it to like stick out too much so there's all these kind of things to think about so we're trying to address it in that way we've also ramped up our hangboard production peter made two new hangboards we did one in conjunction with uh element earth which is a 3d printing they kind of scan and print rock stuff and he nick worked with us so we made a hangboard with him peter made another one um and then just to address your original statement about us being a luxury brand or priced luxury brand i, we don't, I, have I of, don't want to call yeah. it that but it, it does no, I feel just, that I just way wanna, you know somebody said this in the home wall forum the other day and we do not inflate our prices because we think we're special we absolutely do not no. we came into aragon late they priced based on kind of partially when the holds are first molded. So we just came in late. Our price has been higher from the beginning, but it has not been under our control. We definitely operate on a slim margin and it's a margin that we need to operate on to continue having a business. Um, we work constantly, but we do not, we're not like running away with a bunch of money. Like Brian was saying, we've planned out for like being able to like maybe get through three months. We don't have six months of savings. We don't have six months of house. You know, we have house payments like everybody else. Like we have rent. Um, our landlords don't know what they're doing about it yet. So we're not, we're not, we're not trying to be a luxury price. We want people to have the whole sort of home wall. We're, we're doing a deal with gyms where they can give their members a code. So like if you're still paying your gym membership, then your gym can give you a code where you get a discount on our site. So that way there's an incentive that gym, mem gym owners can give their members. So they actually are helping give them something back for continuing to pay their membership if they're able to pay at this time or if the gym wants to use for something else, if we're, we're going to trust people's judgment, but we're trying to work with people to get home wall owners reasonably priced as much as we can accommodate. We can't compete with like stuff that Ryan can pour in house. We just can't compete. I don't think with that because there's just a different amount of overhead. Like we pay a third party supplier for every ounce of plastic that we get. Um, and it, you know, in, in solid form. So it's been made and finished by a company. So it just is more expensive and, um, so we're doing our best to kind of bring together the resources we have for home wall owners so they can find them easily. And then also we're available to talk to anybody, give recommendations, whatever. Um, and then also for people that do have more kind of money and want a connection to it, they don't know how to make a wall or they want a connection to a database. We have the kilter board. We have a few different frame manufacturers so people can make a kilter board. And then they, instead of having to figure out how to set problems, they have a database of 20,000 problems available to them at different angles. So, um, we're trying to provide in that way as well for folks that, because there are a fair amount of folks, you know, I've seen out there that are like, Hey, we want a wall. We don't even know where to start or it needs to be freestanding. And really if you want a freestanding wall, you should buy a frame. And there's, and you were saying people are being sold out. I know that some of the frame manufacturers are, are sold out and they're hustling to get frames made as fast as possible. But I think there are frames available. Um, if you do want to buy something like that instead of making your own. So those are just kind of providing options for people. Ryan, what about uh, at Escape? Are you guys changing how you fundamentally like approach your products if the new reality is kind of home wall buyers? Yeah, I think each each of our five different brands is going to have a you know a much different reaction to how everything's going on. And as you talk about like a premium brand, it's really just about pricing and what each brand has to offer and so i just uh, mentioned the comparison would be like kingdom on your line is something comparable yeah, to kilter yep. in terms of the amount of plastic per hold and and just fairly expensive holds right if you're looking for a jug yep. something from kilter and something from kingdom are probably pretty comparable not yeah but not but still not all of them are necessarily more expensive than you know as as, as brands like 
other brands are getting better plastic. Their prices are coming up if you compare sure. to before. Sure. Sorry, Ryan, continue. Yeah, I think a lot of it's really where it's manufactured is one aspect. There's there's so much that goes into pricing. And so for us, the two highest um, priced brands are is going to be Kingdom and like we have jousting jugs in stock, but no one wants to buy a four hundred dollar jousting jug for their home wall. Mm-hmm. You know, and things are massive. Um, it'd take up like a whole part of their four by eight woody. And so those things are staying on the shelf. Kingdom and working class, those are really sold um, to new gyms and uh, like bigger orders in general, just as a general statement. And those sales have dried up at least 80% like overnight. You know, where the home walls, um, Escape was really built on home walls. We do sell to gyms a lot. And so we're seeing um, that pick back up. We have like, you know, starter packs. And because we manufacture that in house like our pricing per pound or per hold is more affordable and so we see a lot of the the home um users coming to the escape website and that's just you know blowing up overnight um i think a a good tell of like where gyms or people are willing to spend their money is we we started importing ready holds which is the new 360 brand out of europe um they're big they're super cool and they're really expensive you know you're getting 10 holds for a couple grand um, you know, and those were selling really well for us as gyms are psyched and opening and want something different, you know, and th- you know, gym orders have just pretty much stopped, you know, overnight. And so the, our industry has just shifted and now it's, you know, those people that can't climb on their gym are getting really stir crazy and just want some plastic to, to do a pull up on or do like one or two moves on or some big home woodies and, you know, doing something more elaborate. So. Uh, we've never considered hygiene to be, uh, like a factor in how climbing gyms work or how hold manufacturing is managed. I, I'm sure you guys remember whenever that report came out, you know, stating that every climbing hold had some, you know, level of fecal veneer on it or whatever. And nobody batted an eye at that. That was kind of just something we understood or just didn't care about. Um, it, we're in the early stages of this, but it, do you foresee that that might become, might, uh, become a factor as you guys design products or as gyms consider what to buy? And is there any wiggle room at all in modern hold manufacturing to consider trying to create products that are more hygienic or easier to clean? I know it's not reasonable to, to create a perfectly sterile, smooth surface as a grip, you know, that might work as a one-off. Um, but is that something that, you know, could ever actually become part of the, uh, uh, design for climbing holds? Is me or Ryan? Jackie, you can go first. Whoever, whoever's ready. Um, you know, this virus I was reading yesterday, um, that it, one of the things about it is that it sticks to smooth surfaces like metal for longer than it should. So I don't know that a fully dual text hold would make any difference, um, I think the fecal matter thing was allowed to pass because it's probably also everywhere else. People just don't look for it. You know, it's it's disgusting and we can't think about it too much or we will be non-functional. <laughs> um, we, we have thought about different things we could potentially do to make holds, you know, antimicrobial or something like that. Uh, PU is notoriously kind of touchy as to what it will accept and still maintain strength and, and cure properly. Um, I don't. No, we've definitely talked about it. Like early on in this, I was looking at different ways people could sanitize their gym, you know, saying gyms are going to stay open because like in Singapore, they're misting their walls with the stuff called chlorclean every night, which is like a hospital sanitizer. Um, and then they were using ozone. So you can use like UV light and stuff like that um, to try to just take steps to sanitize. Now they have people climbing those gyms that, and they have like distance. So there's only a certain amount of people allowed in a space at a time and they wear masks. They're climbing in the gym with masks on. They're taking temperatures like they're trying everything to stay open and for like the kilter board that's where we're getting a lot of activity out of asia still because they're they're still open and no one else is basically um so yeah it's, again circling back to taking steps to make holds more, more hygienic i don't know how much we can do besides um you know i mean we, we can look into some things but i, I don't know what how much of a difference it's going to make i feel like People are just going to forget all about it. (laughs) And we'd like them not to. We'd like to make it as clean as possible. But, I mean, part of it is, like, gyms can't allow people to wear their climbing shoes off of the padded floor 
if they want to try to keep the padded floor cleaner. And you can't wear street shoes on the padded floor. And that includes coaches. And how many gyms have you ever seen where the youth team coach is not wearing their client, their tennis shoes? You know, so it's like it's going to take systematic change to really have a chance. And even then, I'm not sure um, what it'll do. So really, I think personal hygiene is going to be more important moving forward. And that may also help with the overall gym hygiene. Uh, I think a lot of people are learning how many people they know that just didn't ever wash their hands before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of fundamental changes on the gym level, you know, and developments will come with disinfecting holds, like what's something that you can either spray them down or fog them with, you know, that's not going to make them really slippery, um, to just policies about hand washing, um, shoes on and off, like you mentioned. I, so I think a lot of that will happen gym level. On the whole manufacturing level, there might be technology. Um if it's there, like we'll look into it. I know Dan French loves to geek out on that kind of stuff, and I'm sure he's scratching his head over there on like what additives, you know, Compacts might be able to throw into the, the mixing pot. Um, so I'm I'm sure it's something. There's even we're we're in Minneapolis, and it's a huge medical device industry. Um, they know how to work with plastics that kind of go in that realm and how to disinfect them and so i'm sure there's some stuff that we can learn from looking at other industries in general but that said so much of it's going to come down to gyms how they wash them what they wash them with their cycles and i think that's where we'll see the the biggest change overall all right uh last question is about uh in-house production versus outsourcing and jackie you touched on it previously that maybe you guys have been thinking about it um so ryan you have a mix of products that you create in-house and also those that are uh, outsourced in different places is that giving you a particular leg up in this situation of uncertainty uh and would you consider moving your production more in one direction or another based on how long this goes on yeah I, that that's a tough question we do have really just think about we have five brands manufactured in three different locations and what that does is it just lets us serve people in different ways. And so if we have an international order, it might make more sense for that to come out of Europe. You know, and same thing with Aragon. Um, there's different plastic levels. Like we all have a different mix and each mix um, functions At in Aragon? a different way. What's that? At Aragon or do you mean between your between your oh, different just, manufacturers between every manufacturer so the okay. danamon is different than the aragon mix which is different than you know our two mixes that we have at escape you know and so even as you think about whole designs like if we have something in kingdom we might have that ma manufactured at comp x versus aragon just because of you know how flexible or rigid that we want that hold to be when it's in the consumer's hands and so i don't think about it so much as a leg up is that there are more three different manufacturing locations that let us serve people in a different way either from shipping or from quality standpoint or pricing um, and those are all three different factors that we look at Okay. And what about you, Jackie? Is it something where you guys might be able to find a business advantage if you reconsidered uh, pouring things in-house? I mean, one of the reasons we've never allowed second quality material out in the market under the Kilter name is because we don't want there to be any confusion about um, the material. And by second quality, I just mean not Ar Aragon or Compex. And I'm right, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm sorry if that sounded... I just mean, like, we want to make sure that every... Bit, and not just compacts, but Danomon. So we don't have any Danolite or Danomite or whatever he was making before. Uh, we want to make sure that every hold that we put out has a quality standard of material. And so if there's a problem with it, that we can talk to our manufacturer and get it fixed. And also so people don't say, oh, you know, kilter's too soft or kilter's too whatever, like it cracked in half. I mean, occasionally that'll happen if something's not cured right, but it's very unusual compared to where it used to happen a lot with resin and um Stuff like that. So for us, we've really avoided that because we we want to avoid any kind of confusion. Um, that all said, you know, respect to Ryan for manufacturing. Manufacturing is a lot. It's a lot to set up. It's a lot of work. Uh, we don't want to do that if we can help it. It's we need we need to have to have more space. It's there's like chemical, um, you know, compliance that you have to do to manufacture on a big scale. 
we could potentially manufacture on a small scale, but we have set up now if we really needed to, we probably would just do like a really limited set of things that you could get from us if it was like super necessary for, for home walls to have something. And for us, like I said, we're super grateful for the home wall sales we've been getting. We really appreciate them. They help a lot. And so we definitely want to do what we can to accommodate those people, but it's more effective for us to just give them a discount than it is for us to set up a manufacturing outfit and order more plastic, which is like, you know, whatever, four or five grand for a kit, and then um, do that entire rigmarole. All right. Um, before we wrap up, I just wanted to give you guys an opportunity if you wanted to, if you have any promotions or discounts or anything that you wanted to share or just your website that you want to plug, if there's a particular hold you recommend to people. Uh, Jackie, you can go first. You were, you were just talking about that. Oh, yeah. So we're doing a deal with um, gyms where we're actually going to do two deals. One of them is if, a, if people are still paying their gym membership or like say they buy prepaid or they buy a punch pass or whatever works for the gym, they can get a code from the gym that gives them a discount on our site and they also get free shipping. Um, and there could be some other add-ons as well. Uh, it depends on kind of what we've worked out. And then the second thing is we're going to, we just got these new hang boards out. So we're going to do a deal with gyms where they can do hang board deal for their members. Um, they can collect orders we're just going to try to do a couple of production runs and send those out and then also get the gym to have a hang board or two so their coaches can use them to help uh, with training their clients if that's the direction the gym wants to go in. Anybody who's interested in any of that or has another idea they want to talk to us about, just email me, sales at kiltergrips.com. Um, so that's my big plug. Small plug is, you know, we, we want to work with everybody. If you have questions, if you are don't belong to a gym, you just can't afford to, but you would like a deal on your climbing hold, just give us a call and we'll, we'll work something out for you as well. We're trying to, like, t keep the whole industry um, cared for as best we can right now. We're not in a position where we have a ton of money to throw around, but we're able to float a little bit. So we, as long as we get a little bit coming in, we can put a little bit back out, and that's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, because, you know, I think I, hopefully gyms don't feel that people building home walls is – a danger to them. I think that all of us that have been in the industry are pretty confident that you can have a home wall and you still want to have a gym membership. They kind of complement each other. And um, so scale helping people stay in climbing at this time, I think is important because we don't want people to not get to climb for three months. And by the time they're climbing and just kind of be like, Oh, I'm going to go hiking. So we want to like give them, help them stay fit. So everybody doesn't have to kind of start over when this is over. Sure. And Ryan, what about you guys? Yeah, I would just say right now, it, as everything's evolving, we're excited to serve the home woody industry, you know, and the best way for us to do that is escapeclimbing.com. And that's really, just give us a couple weeks, like to get back up and running before you put your orders in. Um, we do have a, a promo code that we put out, it's called Hooked Up, that you can use at checkout. And that pretty much gives you gym pricing temporarily, just because like, hey, gyms are shut down, let's get you some holds. Um but essentially, we're broken right now uh, for the next couple of weeks. So give us some time to dig ourselves mm -hmm. out of the, the hole from just responding to emails and everything. Um, but once we're up and running, like we want to serve the home woodies, you know, for that time being. And then we want to be around to serve the gyms as they come back online. And so that's going to look different as different promos and different ways that we can help support our industry. Um the other thing, we do have all the brands, and you can buy them through the Escape Climbing website. Um, through the back end, you can kind of shop all the brands, and so that's generally the easiest way to shop it. But I think the biggest thing is our – I started Escape during the housing like crash a bunch of years ago, and like climbing's resilient, you know, and we've built a lot of these brands like through hard times, and this is another one. It looks completely different, and but – you know, we see climbers supporting the industry, different hold manufacturers, the gyms, and, you know, it's an industry that, you know, I want to keep working in. And, you know, it's it's exciting to see people come together and for us to come out on the other end, you know, stronger as a community. Cool. Uh, yeah. So make sure you support your uh, hold manufacturers like Escape and Kilter or whoever's local to you. Thank you both for, uh, for joining us. Thanks, Ryan and Jackie. If you enjoyed this kind of thing, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, support the Patreon, or just join the Discord to talk about everything uh, climbing indoors. And otherwise, we will see you in the next episode. Thanks very much.